One of the things that's always gotten me into trouble is, to put it bluntly, the living God. You see, people don't want God alive. Well, they say they do, and they act like they do, and they pretend like they do, and they contend when they go to church that they do, but when it comes to actually telling someone that, hey, check it out, God is real, Jesus is alive, there's someone bigger than you are, smarter than you are, wiser than you are, <laughs> who's in control of the universe, that can talk to you. Oh, whoa, now wait a minute, I'm sorry. We can go with all of it up until that last part. I'm sorry, I need to interpret what God says from the scriptures. I need to figure it out in my mind and kind of like coordinate it with my thoughts and you know get it into my head that somehow what I read is what God said and that, that way I know that I can make it fit what I want it to because then it fits according to what I think it should. No. <laughs> you see, if God is alive, then he's going to talk to you at some point in time. And the reality is, is whether you like it or not, he chooses when, how, and where he will. So we do spend time in the morning with devotionals and reading our Bibles and praying and seeking those times to just kind of like throw it out there to God. But what got me into trouble is I have always treated God I've always treated Jesus as though he were real, sitting here with us, even as I do right now. And, sorry, I'm busy. Lord, <laughs> would you tell them? <laughs> I mean, come on, let's get real. So, the point is, is that because I have done that, people think I'm kidding or that I'm creating some type of false idealism when Jesus himself said, Behold, Christian, because he didn't write this to non-Christians, because non-Christians can't handle this part. But I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to say to you today, I'm going to say the facts of what God said to his people, to the ones that he died for, the ones that knew him, the ones that walked with him. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and I will sup with him and he with me. Did you hear a knock? <laughs> I expect that someday. Do you? Is your God real? Is your God alive? Are you proving it by the way you live your life? Are you asking him to speak to you? Are you seeking him to direct you? Are you asking him to be in control of your life and then expecting him to take control? Or are you religiously putting him in a box far away in your own little church in the steeple, you know, here is the church and here is the steeple, open the door and see all the people. But maybe that's where your ideas of God is. And the reality is God is bigger than you are. And he wants you to know that today. Because he wants you to be the person in his way showing to the world Jesus is not only alive, but he's living in you. Jesus is not only alive, but he can be talked to. Jesus is not only alive, but he desires for us to know him in an intimate, personal way. And then, as we do, he wants to show us that God the Father wants us to know him in a personal way. Are you satisfied with where you're at? Have you sat back and said, I'll let the preacher tell me what to do? Or do you want the Son of God, the Son of Man, to be your teacher? Like I said, I get into trouble because I don't believe in the living God. I know the living God. I don't believe in Jesus. I know Jesus is real. As real as I am looking at you and as you are looking at me and as real as he is sitting here with us. Jesus is alive and he has evermore always been the same. Living, breathing, speaking, and working in our lives to accomplish His purpose. Not only by His Holy Spirit, but by His presence when He chooses to reveal Himself. As He can at any moment in your life, with your life, about your life, and through your life. <laughs> Let's get Him, God. <laughs>
So make God real in your life. That's what you need to do. He's already alive. Today, in streams whereby we are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. 2 Peter 1.4 when a shipwright builds a vessel, does he build it to keep it upon the stocks? No, he builds the boat for the sea and the storm. And when he was making it, he thought of all the tempests, the waves, and hurricanes, because if he did not, he would be a lousy shipbuilder. When God made you a Christian, when he decided that you would become a believer, when he chose you to be his representation of Jesus on earth, he meant to try you, to test you, to prove you, and when he gave you promises, he told you to trust them and to trust him. He gave you such promises as are suitable for times of tempest, struggle, trial, tossing, and the waves of the world as they come over you. Do you think that God makes shams of some of the things that he has made for swimming? Do you think that God didn't create these promises for you in order to be a part of your life? Did God just promise because he lied? Or is it a fact? that these are the things which God has given for you to be able to be encouraged in, to trust Him for, and to ask Him to fulfill. We have all heard of swords that were useless in war. We have all heard of guns that could not fire. We have all heard and seen planes that would not fly. And even of shoes that were made to sell but were never meant to be walked in. Just ask a woman in high heels. <laughs> Sorry, I <laughs> went there. God's shoes are of iron and brass, and you can walk to heaven in them without their ever wearing out. And his life belts you may be able to swim a thousand Atlantics upon, and there will be no fear of your sinking. His word of promise is meant to be tried, tested, proven, and shown that he who has promised will cause it to come true, in you and for you. There is nothing Jesus likes or dislikes more than for his people to make a show thing of him, a pretend, a not trusting in him relationship he loves to be employed by us to be asked of him to prove therewith what god has said is true will be accomplished in you he loves to not only do this but to work for us even our lord jesus is given to us for our present use do you not make use of jesus as you ought to do as he stands before the father as a high priest praying for us interceding on our behalf acting as he would choose to, sending us the Holy Spirit and causing us to know him in a more personal and intimate way? Oh man, I beseech you not to treat God's promises as if they were curiosities in a museum or simply written in the Word of God as dead scripture, but to make them everyday sources of comfort and to resource them for when you are in need, because what God has promised, that he will do. Trust the Lord whenever your time of need comes upon you and look to him to fulfill his word in you and recognize that you can ask him to do what he has promised and he said he would in his word for you, to you, about you, and in you because of one reason and one reason alone. You serve a living God.